Hi, my name is Chad Kaufman. I'm president of Global Economics Group, and I'm going to talk for a couple minutes today about the use of event studies in class action securities litigation. Um, these matters typically involve claims that a company has misrepresented or omitted something material about its business and therefore inflated its own stock price. Um, one element of proof in these cases uh, for plaintiffs to collect is, is the element of loss causation, meaning that the uh, misrepresentation or omission must actually be the cause of the loss the investor ultimately suffers. In the vast majority of these cases, the, the most reliable method for assessing uh, whether there's loss causation is to observe the stock price reaction upon revelation of the relevant truth in the matter. So the best way to illustrate this is through an example. Um, let's assume there's a company that announces that they have a billion dollars in revenue in a particular year, and then sometime later they announce that uh, that was incorrect and that they really only had $500 million in revenue in a given year. And let's assume on that day the stock price falls 30%. Um, so the question is, how do we scientifically demonstrate uh, that that drop in the stock price is related to the new information and not some unrelated market or industry factor or due to random fluctuations in stock prices? And that's where the event study methodology comes in. And the event study methodology is a well-accepted methodology that's been used for over 30 years by academics, both within and outside the litigation context. Um, so the way an event study is run is to, is to take a period over which you're going to analyze how does a, a particular stock and, and its daily returns uh, correlate with uh, an industry index. So we specify a simple regression equation uh, much like this, uh, and we estimate uh, an intercept term and the beta, which is the measure of correlation between the industry index and the stock. And so in our example, let's assume that alpha is zero as it is in uh, it will be zero or close to zero in an efficient market. We're going to assume that beta is 0.85, and what that means is that for every 1% movement in the index, uh, we expect to observe a 0.85% movement in, in the particular stock we're analyzing. Let's assume on the given day uh, that we're trying to analyze that that index did indeed increase by 1%. And so what we get out of this is a predicted return, what we'll call r hat t, uh, which uh, is 0 plus 0.85 times 1% or 0.85%. What we then ask is how did the actual return differ from this predicted return? So we calculate what's known as an abnormal return on day t, which is just the actual return at time t, in this case minus 30%, minus the predicted return on day t, which in this case is 0.85%. So we're assuming that the index was actually up this day by 1%. And so we would have expected this stock, uh, after considering industry factors, to actually rise 0.85%. So the total abnormal return is actually minus 30.85%. So now that we've factored out the potential of industry and market forces for influencing the stock price, uh, and we still have a large negative return, now we have to ask the question, is this return large enough to rule out random stock price movements. One of the things that comes out of this regression is an estimate of the standard deviation of the errors, uh, meaning how volatile is the stock um, uh, once market factors are taken into consideration. Let's assume in this case it's 2%. Um, so the standard deviation of returns after, after controlling for market uh, impacts is 2%. Uh, assuming that abnormal returns are, are uh, normally distributed, uh, we can calculate what's known as a t-statistic, which is simply defined as the abnormal return at time t divided by the standard deviation of the errors, what I'll call sigma e. In this case, that's minus 30.85% divided by 2%, or roughly minus 15. Minus 15. Um, we know from elementary statistics that a t-statistic that that's greater than 1.96 or less than negative 1.96 is what's called statistically significant uh, at the 95% at the confidence level. And so what this is saying is that with 95% confidence, if there's no new information, we would expect the t-statistic to fall within this range. Given the fact that this minus 15 falls well outside the expected range, we would be willing to conclude this is statistically significant drop and draw the inference that the new news caused the stock price decline and therefore satisfying the element of loss causation in this case. 
Um, that's the basics of event study regressions and event study analyses. Um, obviously, in a particular case, it can be much more complicated, and, and uh, there are many case-specific issues to deal with, but I hope this gives a basic understanding. Thank you.